Okie dokie, that's a decent sized box. It says on the outside that it is blank PCBs, which could be true. I have put in a few orders recently. I'm a little bit agnostic when it comes to PCB suppliers at the moment. And I have had some sponsorship before from Seed Studios. I've had some sponsorship from PCB Way. And I don't think I've had any sponsorship from JLC PCB. Ooh, look at that. That's lovely. Um, so this one is from... I don't know. I really don't know. Looks interesting. I have been expecting a couple of... Uh, PCBs to do with the Kim Uno. So on that says Kim Uno there. Um, if you can read that or not, let's try zooming in a little bit. Yeah, Kim Uno. So it's possibly to do with that. There's a couple of boards that I've got that use one uses an Atmega 328 directly, and one uses like a Pro Mini. So we'll see which one this is. Um, this one I think is the Pro Mini, so I think the Pro Mini sits on the back, and that looks like some spots for you. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. This is the Kim Uno project, it says Kim Uno there, and you put a couple of um seven segment displays on there. So I think we'll gather the bits and pieces and solder this one right up. In fact, beside me here, I've got these buttons which I'd ordered ages ago. Uh, and would suit this project really well, so that you can not only have all the various markings here, but you can also maybe color code um, the buttons on them as well, which will be good. So yeah, let's get this one soldered up. I've got to find a Pro Mini somewhere and uh, see if we can't use it as a Kim Uno. That'd be great. It's so pretty. Uh, I've just put some coloured buttons on the top there for the ones that I'm likely to use once I've entered the uh, individual opcodes. And here we've got the uh, Pro Mini, which I've soldered up and ready to go. So I'll go upstairs and see if I can program with that. We'll put a few resistors in and the seven segment displays. This is a pretty easy project to put together. Yeah, so I've got a little bit off script, actually. The build requirements or the build manual recommends that at this point you solder male headers to the pcb i've soldered female headers to the pcb and male headers to the arduino uh, pro mini so that i can pull it off i guess at any moment should the project go horribly wrong uh, i don't think it will it's a pretty easy project to put together you can see the resistors are in the next component to go in are the two four bit seven segment displays let's put them in now this might be a little dark, but I think that's the only way we're going to see the testing of the uh, four-digit seven-segment displays. Uh, you just grab a multimeter and then in continuity mode, so you can see that there's a, uh, a little sound and um, also on the display as well. Uh, all we need to do is to go find those pins. I'm just going to concentrate on this segment at the back here. So if I can put this on here and then see if we can pick this up on the segment as we go through there you go i can see that even through the camera i think that's this fourth segment here and you'll see different parts of that light up as we go through and check for continuity uh, and in that way whoop, that's a good one on the end there let me just see if i can get that one again there we go can you see that uh, and that way you can check it before you solder stuff in because there's nothing worse than soldering in and then realizing that uh, that the display doesn't work. Okay, so I'll test all of those uh, before I solder that up. I uh, probably should just say a word about this as well. So these are cheap uh, clone Pro Minis. They don't look like the ones that are in the uh, instructions for building the Kim Uno. That's okay. There's just a couple of things that you probably need to be aware of. Let's zoom in and we'll have a look. So this is not an original Pro Mini, and that presents some interesting problems as we go. Not really problems, actually. On the original Pro Mini, you see those little holes there that marked A4 and A5. There's a couple over the other side as well. And the 
Kim Uno PCB makes allowances if you do have an original Pro Mini. Now, these ones aren't actually used. These holds that I'm pointing out that aren't there. They're not actually used. Uh, however, you can, on the Kim Uno board, solder them up, I guess, to add extra rigidity. Seeing as how I'm not soldering mine in, but I'm pushing it into female headers, it's not such an issue anyway. But just to be aware that not having those holes does not impact upon the Kim Uno at all, and that is mentioned in the build. It's also a little mention about the speed and capacity of these Pro Minis. There is a vast variety of them. There are 3.3 volt, 8 megahertz. There are 5 volt, 16 megahertz. There are variations. There are ones with bootloaders, one without bootloaders. So I didn't feel comfortable going through what I had to do to get this thing to be running at uh, 16 megahertz which I think is preferable it probably will run at 8 and if you're thinking what is the difference it's basically in the serial speed so ideally it should be running at 9600 board that's what the software is expecting if you have difficulties in setting this up just google or should I say duck duck go for privacy reasons just search for bootloader and Pro Mini. There are a lot of sites out there. I was able to reset the fuses on these using an Arduino Uno in ISP mode and just connect it up as per uh, you know the many, many sites out there that tell you how to do it. Basically, it's, uh, it's getting ground and uh, getting five volts, let's say, from the Uno directly and then uh, reset to 10, and then 11, 12, and 13, and then running the software to burn the bootloader or whatever else you want to do. You can't do that with a, uh, a TTL uh, to USB um, connector, which is what I use to program that. I should show you that as well, actually, because that's another interesting thing. But just be aware that, the, that you may have some difficulties if it's, if it's not a, a legitimate, um, you know, but, a, but a, um, how do you say, like a cheap Chinese clone. Uh, if it's not a legitimate Pro Mini, then there may be some difficulties. So as long as you're aware of that, uh, the solutions are pretty easy to find online. Uh, and so just go and search for that and you will be fine. Always happy to take comments and questions uh, in the video section, the video comment sections below anyway. And uh, I'll possibly put a few links on the blog as well. So always worth checking the blog for the technical details on a lot of these videos. Uh, including links to the code and, and so forth. All right, I'll go and get the uh, FTDI uh, TTL to USB connector, the module, and show you how I set up the program for that as well. So I've got the FTDI programmer connected up uh, as a serial interface on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, pin for pin, is the Pro Mini, just side-by-side side on a breadboard. Pretty straightforward. Uh, so we'll just try a blinky on there to make sure that the communication and programming works. So there's the uploading and there's the blinking. So now that we know that we can communicate with it and the fuses have been set properly, we just need to put the Kim Uno software on there. I think we're pretty much finished. I did solder up this double row of mail headers on the side here. Not really sure what that is for, but I'm assuming that if we do want to do some work with this uh, fake 6502, that there are some breakup pins. I I don't really know. I'd be happy if the thing just works. I've put the uh, 5 volt and a 6 volt um, slide switches on the top here. One design decision that I did make was to put the power on the underside coming in with these 90 degree headers here. I think that, that's probably just a little neater uh, to not so much interfere with what we're going to be hopefully seeing on those um, on those displays on the top. All right, let's give it some power and see what happens. Here we are with the finished product. I've just put a bit of tape across the, the top here. It cuts down a little bit on the glare uh, from the LEDs, but also it just helps with the flicker a little bit as well. And I have changed the code of the um, the Kim Uno software so that the flickering rate, or rather the update 
of the rate on the uh, LEDs changes. So hopefully you won't see too much flicker. Certainly to the naked eye, it is rock stable. Uh, let's plug it in. Oh, and I'm plugging in uh, with this cable here. And this is a USB to serial cable, which are very, very cheaply available. I'll, uh, I'll put a screenshot of where I got it from. And it's just got RX and TX coming in here and then uh, VCC and ground straight into the Pro Mini. I've put a couple of standoffs in here too to protect that Pro Mini and all the cabling so it's nice and stable. Let's plug it in and see if anything can be seen. Yes, that's good. Okay, so there is a little bit of flicker there, I think, but hopefully that's not too bad for you. Right, so there is a test program uh, at zero two zero zero, that's nice. And there's a first instructional opcode. This is one that we saw when we put the Kim Uno software on the ESP32. I think that was a C3, the Seed Studio um, video, which I'll link. Um, and you just run this to see if the thing's alive and well. And if you press go, uh, all it does is it swaps two addresses around in memory, which is um, which is pretty simple. Uh, now, let's see if we can go via PuTTY and uh, and get into that. So if I run that, yep, I'll just move this window. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So we can see the same on the screen as what we can uh, on the keyboard. So if I change that to, uh, let's say, FF00. No, it's not behaving itself. Let's do a reset and try again. Uh, FF, there we go. Zero, zero, handy reset button. And this should take us into the WAS monitor if I press go. So it goes off with the screen here, but you'll see it on the serial monitor here. We are now on the WAS monitor. So if we look at particular addresses, and we'll just do pretty much the same as what we did when it was on the ESP32, as opposed to the physical hardware here. We'll go 0300 through to 0350. Should be nothing in there. There isn't. Let's put our code on that we developed at the time, which was a very simple division uh, program. And uh, and so I'll just load that up on the WASMON. And it does division via, because there's no division opcode, it does it via continuous subtraction. And uh, all it is is 23 divided by 7 to get 3 and 2 left over. That's what we saw last time. All right, so now let's just check to see that's all in memory. So 0300 to 0350. Yep, and uh, it's all there. Right, so I think from memory what happened was if you run this code in these four memory locations here, you get your 7, your 23, which is represented as 17 in hexadecimal, and then your... Um, uh, it goes three with two left over is the actual division. Uh, all right, let's try it. Uh, we'll go back to, I'll press tab. Okay, so I'm in Kim mode. Let's get out of Kim mode. There we are, back in keypad mode again. And it was at zero, three, zero, zero. So we should get our A9 opcode, and we do. And then if I just press G for go, so the program has run. And I think, therefore, it should be 0, 3, 3, 0. Yeah, so that's our uh, 7. So we're dividing 23 by 7. Uh, and if we go to the next opcode, if we just press plus, it should take us to the next memory, surely. There it is. Look at that. So at 331, it's 17 hexadecimal, which is 23. Press plus again. And there's our answer. 23 divided by 7 is 3. And press again. And that's our remainder too. So that's pretty good. I guess one other thing that we should try, which we did last time, was the chess program, uh, micro chess. So if we go to, it's already pre-coded in, in the uh, Kim Uno. And it's at location C000. And when I press go on the serial monitor here, you'll see the micro chess code come up. Um, I think it's C to populate the board. Yep, there they all are, the pieces. And I think it's E to swap white and black. Yep, that's good as well. And then we'll just move the, let's move the queen's pawn from, so that's 6-3 is where it starts. So 6, 
three, and we want to move it to four three, four three, and then if I press F to go, it should update. Yeah, there it is. The white pawn has uh, come out. That's great. And what I'll do is I'll press P C, and that is uh, for the um, the Kim Uno code, the micro chess code to make the move. And you can see all the dots appearing down the bottom, quite a bit slower than on the ESP32 running on the uh, on the Pro Mini that's on the, uh, that's on the back here, uh, chugging away. Uh, and you can also put this uh, onto an STM32 as well. So there's a few options for this code, but of course the Pro Mini is the one that fits snugly on the back. Right, so that seems to be going okay. Oh, here we go, and we have a move, so the knight has come out, so that's 01 to 22, and then you can see it here, there's your 01, where the knight was, and here's your 22, where it has appeared. So that's pretty good. I think I might come back to this. I'm pretty keen to try the get key function, which means that, let's say we're doing that division, instead of hard coding the numbers 23 and 7, uh, we would... Uh, ask the user to enter in and treat this as a calculator. Uh, this can do all sorts of uh, of marvelous things. You know, of course, you can code your own games. Anything basically that the 6502 uh, has done in the past in terms of, um, you know, what is it, the Commodore 64. Um, we had the Apple II, uh, the Apple One, all sorts of things that are based on this. Then there are snippets of code that can run on this. There's a vast amount of information out there on running stuff on the 6502. I really like this guy. I'm going to make a few more of them and start to uh, modify them some more. I think it's a great way for people to get into computing from an entry level, but also uh, for us old folks to, uh, to reminisce about the past. That is the circuit working for this week, and we'll see you next time.